الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا متعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا اللهم ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه عنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The most compassionate, the most merciful All praise and thanks are due to him And peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He who is guided by the will of Allah No one can misguide him And he who is misguided No one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Especially brothers and sisters, inshallah, in today's khutbah, with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will be handling a, a topic with the title of the strategy of dealing with ups and downs in our spiritual life. The idea came to me maybe one or two weeks ago after I read an article this article that da'ya of Sheikh Jazahullah Khairan, he was addressing the following problem which many Muslims might encounter after Ramadan. So the status as such, we say many of us, because of the special time of Ramadan, blessings of the taraweeh, the spiritual happiness that many of us, alhamdulillah, we do feel, Qiyam, the suhoor, reading the Qur'an, the halaqat, the circles. From here and there, many of us, we do really have a very beautiful, high spiritual vibe and good relations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, after Ramadan, for many reasons, when we go to the, back to the normal life, many of us, we go down. So he was saying that author, Dr. Jamal Basha, he said, so some people might accuse themselves of being hypocrites. Say, there I was, mashallah, like a sahabi, and now I'm <laughs> down. So this ups and downs means I'm not a good or a true or a genuine believer. So this will disappoint them, and this could be like a defect point. Satan could, you know, <laughs> come through that. You are a hopeless case. Just forget it. Don't waste your time. Don't repeat it again. Don't seek spirituality in Ramadan. Just forget it and go and live your life. You know? So, 
this is the problem that some people might find. So today, I will be using two beautiful hadith, amazing, powerful hadith, that they highlight to us how to make like a strategy in understanding this problem. And I will add like an example that could be like a, let's say, a model or a criterion you use it or a standard. You can test yourself and you can know how to handle this normal problem. <laughs> okay? Now the first hadith, Prophet Muhammad said, أَلَا إِنَّ لِكُلِّ عَمَلٍ شِرَةٍ وَلِكُلِّ شِرَةٍ فَتْرَةٍ فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَى سُنَّةِ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ أَوْ رَشَدَ أَوْ هُدِيَ Now the meaning of this hadith, Prophet Muhammad says, each deed, every deed has a peak, top. And each top of a deed has a fatra, which means laziness, coolness, going down after the up. He said the one who is, when he goes down out of laziness and coolness, was still in the area of my, my sunnah, he is a successful person. Now, what does the hadith mean? Prophet Muhammad is admitting and telling us, be careful. You are a human beings, not angels. So it's very acceptable for you to be up, then to go sometimes down. But be careful, these are my words now. Design your life in a way, when you go down, your down should be very limited. Not so too much down. This is the core idea of this hadith. I will connect it with another hadith. Then I will highlight my, my own example. The other hadith, Sahabi, his name is Hanzala al-Usdi. Once he was walking in the streets, he met Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So when Abu Bakr saw him, he said, Ya Hanzala, maluka aw kayfa tajidu nafsak. He asked him, how do you find yourself? Hanzala replied, I see myself as a hypocrite, literally. I am a hypocrite. From my point of view, I am a hypocrite. He said, why do you say this? When I sit with Prophet Muhammad, when I'm in his presence, and he's talking about the Jannah, and the Naeem, and the pleasure, and we will be there, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of us to be from those people. He said, I find myself in the top. High spiritually. I feel as if literally I am in the paradise, in the Jannah. When I go back and I'm engaged with many things outside, decades, you know, problems, needs, this and that, from here and there, I go down. So therefore, if if I'm with the Prophet up, outside, down, means I am hypocrite. This is how he judged himself, literally. Abu Bakr said, but you know, this is exactly what I find as well. So therefore, if you are a hypocrite, I am a hypocrite as well. So let's go to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and ask him about this strange status. Basically, what it is, we, under which category really we are. They came to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Ya Rasulullah, they explain the same thing. When we are with you, we feel that in completely as if we are in the Jannah. When we go out and we are engaged in many things, activities, we go down. So, are we hypocrites? Then Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, ليس ذاك يا حنظرة. He said, Wallahi, لو أنكم بقيتون, بقيتم كما تكونون عندي قال صفحتكم الملائكة في الطرقات يا حنظلة ولكنها ساعة وساعة. The meaning, he said, Handallah, look. Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he is fixing the misconception of the Sahabi. He has a misconception. Prophet's role now to fix this misconception. He said, Ya Handallah, if, if what you think should be in reality, which is to stay exactly 24-7 as if you are with me all the time with this high level of spirituality, you will be, angels will shake hands with you in the streets and when you are sitting in your couches and your beds at homes, which means you will be like 
angels to a degree that angels will find no problem that you see them and they see you and they will be your close friends I will shake hands with you which is not the case because you are not angels <laughs> you are human beings you have weakness points you have defect points angels that were created in a way they just obey the commandment and they have capabilities characteristics that they do not make sense they do not feel tired they do not so we do not compare ourselves to so say alhamdulillah if you think that the normal situation to be as such as if you are asking to be an angel and you are not and they will not shake hands with you but alhamdulillah sa'atun wa sa'a which means sometimes you will be up sometimes you will be down so basically hadith is finished now prophet muhammad in this hadith was explaining for him and for us part of the human nature from one angle the other angle giving him the excuse don't judge yourself badly when you go down however be careful don't accept this down to go too far this is the point that's why I will now highlight say my own way how in our own words now in today's words to make it simple to us inshallah and by this we will finish the khutbah inshallah so we have two hadith now the two hadiths they talked about the nature the excuse the example try to imagine with me now the following let's say image image now small circle number a red second circle surrounding first circle b pink try to imagine all of you okay because i can't <laughs> do anything now now third circle c orange fourth circle d yellow fifth circle e white a red the major big sins this is the circle second one b pink for minor sins circle third c which is orange for not committing haram and uh, uh, not committing big major sins but just living in a conservative good nice way <laughs> but just with the basic minimum now fourth one i'm applying i'm applying as much as i can from the obligations and the prohibited things with some slight good extra th things from the sunnah and the nawafil biggest one i'm going to the top of doing the extras the added values i'm not just praying the five times in the masjid let's say as an example but on daily basis i have at least two rak'at qiyam before the fajr for example it's part of my life okay now logically in a philosophical way in a mathematical way if my life all the time in e the white one when i go to the downs of my and i fail and i'm weak i will go to what is next to the e it's the d which is for example the yellow i'm just i'm just falling in some kind of shortcomings not doing some kind of small sunan <laughs> If I'm, my life is completely goes around the yellow, when I fall down, I will go to the <laughs> orange. If I'm living just in the orange, which doing just minor things or something, I will, when I fall down, I will go to the pink. If I'm living in the pink, for example, pink, for example, it's an example of that. I am doing minor sense, not extras, not applying the fard, but I'm, I'm not doing the big haram, Sheikh. I'm not doing the major sins, alhamdulillah. I'm not dealing with magic. I'm not committing zina. I'm not, but, you know, around the area. For example, I will give examples now. Once I fall down just once, for whatever reason, I will go immediately to the red area. Red area, the major sins. <laughs> so I will give you simple, quick example to apply it practically. If my life is surrounded with the best friends, 
Jama'a at the masjid, having a word of the Quran, very nice with my parents. My priority is my deen, my Allah, my parents, my family, myself, doing everything in the perfect way and extras. Whatever happens, yes, I have downs. Still, now the hadith will be applied on me. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَىٰ سُنَّتِي فَقَدْ هُدِي When you go down from this up, you will still in the successful area. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. No problem. Because you have designed your life on that nice, you see, plan. <laughs> and so on and so on. Imagine, for example, if I'm living, I'm living. I designed my life on the, let's say, orange or pink area. Which, for example, theoretically, most of my friends, they drink. And I decided not to leave any one of them. Part of my easy going thing, whatever ads comes into my face while I'm searching the nets, contains haram, halal, possibility, porno, yes, no, just I clicked out of curiosity. <laughs> just I have an idea. So at least three, two times, few minutes, easily I might be searching haram things. It's part of my daily life. <laughs> For example, I don't care if my friends, they're having their girl friends. When we go somewhere, if someone asks to drink alcohol, I don't drink, alhamdulillah. But half of the people around me, they drink. <laughs> I'm not up doing the haram directly now. Out of whatever, something happened with me. I was depressed. I faced some kind of psychological, emotional I failed in one of the, my courses. Someone hit me in the back. S something happened to me. I'm down now. Everything around me helps me to go where? To the pure major haram. Just imagine a close friend of mine, which I decided not <laughs> to give up making him my close friend. He's having drugs, alcohol, haram girlfriends. So I'm down now. He's next to me. He wants to do... He wants to do, <laughs> you know, he wants to pay, the, the, to be a nice friend. He will offer me something to smell or something to drink. Even he will bring a nice girl to take care of me because I'm depressed now. And this is the beginning of <laughs> the end. It's the beginning of the end. By this, I might go to somewhere that I can't come back again to the straight path. Now, the idea, the idea, do your best. From one angle, alhamdulillah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we are not angels. Point one. Point two, do we have weakness points? Yes. Is it possible that we go down? It's part of your nature to go down. Be careful. Design your life that your down should be surrounded with a lot of supporting items. Whenever you go down, this down will be still manageable, still controllable. So I can't, as a Muslim, the Muslim by default is a clever person because he is the one who knows the know-how of the software, of the system of operating the universe. By the way, Allah created the universe. And Allah is operating the universe through laws, in our words now, software, systems. He gave us an idea about the software. How does it operate? What takes you up? What brings you down? <laughs> he said, Don't, He's giving you part of my psyche, my, my deep psychology and your deep psychology. He, created, he designed us. He knows, as I was saying in the Arabic khutbah, I said, it's nearly impossible for someone who's living in the E area, the white one, in one incident just to jump to the A area. It's impossible. If someone is leading a life genuine, real life of the complete full, when he falls down, it's impossible to go immediately to the pure top major haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Don't follow the footsteps. He said, Don't come close. Don't follow the footsteps. Some major sins, you can't even if you want to commit them just out of a sudden. You need a gradual preparation even to accept doing it. 
you need to break the ice of number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number, then you will do it. So if you plan your life to be in area nine, <laughs> whatever happens, you will be in the worst case scenario in area five, area four. You will not go immediately from nine <laughs> to one. It's in the low impossible. So we know the system. We know the defect points. We know as if in my words, Prophet Muhammad is showing us some kind of genuine divine antivirus. How to use it properly from the origin, original source. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will say this and I will say this and I will say this and I will إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير Respected brothers and sisters Now, one of the things that الحمد لله I feel proud of being Muslim because of what we have in Islam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed his relation with us on the base of two big elements, niyyah and juhud, intention and efforts, not necessarily results. You must feel happy because of this, which means whatever you are facing now from difficulties, whatever you wish to do for the sake of Allah, Whatever the number of obstacles in our face as Ummah, or as a community, or as individuals, if you know the Haq, you just do your best, purify your intention. Even if results were literally zero, you will be rewarded in full as if everything has been done. I repeat, you need to remember these two roles while you are struggling with your weakness. No accountability depending on results. Accountability is built exclusively on the base of intention and efforts. Unlike all human beings on earth. Who on earth will accept you as a salesperson or a marketing guy working in a big or small or medium company? You keep working, working, doing it, but no results. Who will accept you? No results. No sales. خلاص عمي كيك اوت يلا وي دونت نيد يو نو ريزلتس اوتسايد وذ الله سبحانه وتعالى الله داز نوت كير وذ ريزلتس الله كيرز وذ انتنشنز اند افورتس يا الله وات وات از ذا ايفيدنس فور ذيس يو ويل ويل سي باي ذا واي اي دونت نو اف يو نو بروفيت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم تولد اس ذات ذا نمبر اوف بروفيتس اند ماسنجرز ذات وير سنت فور هيومانيتي ديورينج ذا تايم اوف هيومانيتي ويتش وي دونت نو هاو ماني ثاوزندز اوف ييرز He was asked by one of the Sahaba, Ya Rasulullah, ma'iddatul anbiya wa rusul. What's the number of number prophets and messengers? He said, prophets, they are 124,000 prophets. The messengers, they are about 315. So we are talking about those who were sent with a message from Allah, more than 100,000 persons. We know by names 28. Just 28 out of 120 plus thousands. Prophet Muhammad in the hadith says, قَالْ يَأْتِ الرَّسُولُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَمَعَهُ الْوَاحِدِ وَمَعَهُ الْإِثْنَانِ وَمَعَهُ الْثَلَاثَةِ وَيَأْتِ الرَّسُولُ وَلَيْسَ مَعَهُ أَحَدِ He said, at the day of judgment, when accountability comes, those prophets and messengers, some of them, they will come with just one person followed him. Some of them with two, some of them with three, some of them will come with none. No one believed in him. Does this mean that he will go to the hellfire because no one followed him? No. <laughs> Nuh alayhi salam, his wife and his son, both of them, they rejected. And they are regarded as an example. His wife was regarded as, as, as an example for the kuffar. An example for those who committed the kuffar. Prophet Muhammad, Nuh alayhi salam, he is from the... Those in the highest top level for us in, in Islam. So what is the point? The point that please don't let any space or room for shaitan for disappointment. But what can I do? What shall I do? No, no, no. Be careful. This is the law. You have weakness. Reschedule your plans. 
replan your life according to that system. Do your best, whatever good, if, if good results came, alhamdulillah, say alhamdulillah. Type bad results came, but not out of your shortcomings. You did your best. The results were zero. Alhamdulillah, no problem. <laughs> it's not my problem. It's not my fault because Allah is the one who's controlling them. But I have done my best. Even if I, what if another time I fall in short? Sa'atun fasa'aya hamdala. If you stayed like what you think you will be like, you will be like an angel. We are not angels. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us, inshallah, and to help us, inshallah, to seek the true knowledge and to have a genuine true knowledge in our religion to enjoy living Islam and enjoy telling the people of our, about great Islam. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ghafir lana warhamna wa'afina wa'afu anna ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asiyatik wa min ta'atika ma tuballiguna bihi jannatak wa min al-yaqeen ma tuhawinu bihi alayna masaib al-dunya wa matta'na Allahumma bi asma'ina wa absarina wa quwatina ma ahyaytana. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت إنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يعز من عاديت ولا يذل من واليت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت فلك الحمد على ما أنعمت به ولك الشكر على ما أوليت نستغفرك ربنا ونتوب إليك نؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك اللهم إنا عبيدك أبناء عبيدك أبناء إمائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاؤك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة